We've now had 15 positive weeks out of the last 17. That is the longest stretch for a bullish advance in the markets going back to 1989. Let's talk about what you need to know before the bell this morning. The market is trading within this very defined kind of trend channel uh, that goes back to November. And every time we get to the top of this trend channel, we sell off. And that's exactly what happened yesterday. Got to the top of that trend channel on Friday, sold off a bit yesterday. This morning, futures are a little flattish. Uh, they're up a little bit. We'll see how, you know, how the market opens and, and plays today. But again, we just stay really kind of confined to this trend channel. So nothing really outside of the ordinary. As we, and, and as we said yesterday, as long as this 20-day moving average continues to hold, that is now key support for this market. A break below that 20-day moving average is going to be an indication of a bit, uh, a bit larger move to the downside. But right now, certainly nothing, nothing warranting that at the moment. Um, MACD signals, you know, on a buy, flirting around, you know, kind of flipping back and forth here at very high levels. Market is overbought, but you know, we're still trying to work through some of that. The, the, the big kind of note here is, though, is that we do have this rising market and we do have a negative divergence in relative strength. So that's kind of one of the kind of the warning signs that this market's getting a little bit long. Also, uh, we've now had 15 positive weeks out of the last 17. That is the longest stretch for a bullish advance in the markets going back to 1989. And so the, the important thing to remember, is, as we talked about some yesterday, is that the last time we had a similar advance like this was going back from you know, March to, to July of last year. Then you had that correction. So again, you know, there, there's going to be a correction at some point now. It could be a month from now. It could be two months from now. So again, don't get all negative at the moment. Start you know, uh, going to a whole bunch of cash and, and making drastic changes to your portfolio. We're going to have a correction of five to 10% over the next few months. But again, when it's going to occur and what triggers it, who knows, right? Uh, look, the Fed could come out next week or next month and say something that you know, says, hey, you know what, we're not even gonna the lower rates this year. And, and that could spook the markets, right? Because the markets are so dependent right now on rate cuts. However, the easing of financial conditions because of this rise in the markets, uh, the decline in yields, those easing of financial conditions have already acted as 100 basis points of Fed rate cuts for the economy. So again, we see this increasing exuberance. We see this increase in financial conditions that is actually acting as easing for the markets. So again, that puts the Fed in a position where they don't have to rush to cut rates. The market's doing the work for them at this point. And that could potentially be a trigger that disappoints the market here at some point over the next few months because the market is, is betting very heavily on these rate cuts coming now. The, again, they thought it was coming in March. They've now adopted to that that, oh, we're not going to get it till June. But if we, if we start to look like we're not going to get a, a rate cut in June or July, that could be the trigger for a bit of a sell-off this summer. So that's what I'm saying. It could be a while before we break this. But again, this advance is very long already. So again, uh, expecting a correction should not be a shock at this point. So do a little preparation, take some profits, rebalance risk. Again, try to remember how you felt last October. I was getting a ton of emails last October about this market's never going to stop going down. You know, I'm, I'm losing all my money, etc. But just three months earlier at the peak, market was never going to stop going up. So again, that's psychology at work and just understand that that's what's going to happen at some point. So prepare a little bit in advance. Yes, you may miss a little bit of the upside, but odds are you're going to get a better opportunity to put that money to work. Okay, that's what you need to know before the bell this morning.